on our side or on the AG side? You know, I'm not going to say So it. let's not go into the detail, but on, on that issue, let us make this general point. Mm. I personally think that some of the cases in the Supreme Court do not get delayed as a reason of inefficiency, but as a reason of political calculation. It falls to the Supreme Court to disabuse our minds and to consistently act in ways that make us believe that if some of these delays happen, then indeed they were unavoidable. All that being said, look, people don't realize that there are thousands of cases that go to the Supreme Court. And a few that affect people, when it goes a certain way, then they are screaming and shouting. Let us get these things clearly. The judges are the supervisors of the realm. And that's a very onerous duty, a very powerful place. But somebody has to appoint them. And when he talks about packing the court, because this president is appointing people, there's a doctrine of necessity. He has to do it. When he does it, NDC says it's packing the court. But when you do it, NDC, when you are in power, then they also come and say it's packing the court. So let's get this straight. It is utterly, utterly uh, 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 distasteful when politicians are involved in the judiciary. Utterly distasteful. I started with a direct question to you in a matter that you were involved in, which has been used as an example of the delay in the courts. And I said that I think that is a matter of political calculation, but I didn't want to be at hominem about that. You, that. you haven't answered that question. What's, what does that mean, political calculation? Because that, that Domelovo, Domelovo was was Domelovo's was case sacked, was delayed, so to speak, and then you filed a suit. Yes, and it took over a year to hear the suit. And who, who was the cause? And I'm saying that with this huge judicial system, if you want me to go and detect who was the cause, what I can tell you is this. If we were a country and the judiciary were minded to hear that case, within good time, it could have happened. So the decision not to hear it was not an accident that was unavoidable. It was a decision that was taken. In the absence of a setting <clears throat> rule or regulation, mm -hmm. for example, we did uh, election petition for eight months. Yes. Then we went to refine the rules. Mm -hmm. And the rules now say within 45 uh, days, the case will be over. Mm -hmm. So there are specific timelines and dates that has to be followed. Mm -hmm. In the absence of that, mm -hmm. in such a case, mm -hmm. do you still put the blame squarely on the Supreme Court that the Domelevo case delayed? I believe the Supreme Court can do far better than it did in a double level. But the lawyers had work to do, which, which they also defaulted you on some occasions. The Supreme Court. Sometimes the lawyers are instructed on this and that and that, and the cases are abridged and things move faster. So see, my submission, maybe we'll deal with some of these things. We need a full program for this. And we'll be talking I, I, about- I get that, that Kofi. I needed, oh. I needed it to be clear that whilst you did your part, and as Martin Pebu was leading the process, mm -hmm. We saw how he got frustrated at certain yes. points where he was looking for the court to issue a hearing notice for the matter yes. to come on. The system and was frustrated. It was not coming on. Yes. But for the period, there were times that you could say that there was a certain laxity on what the percentage? part of those pursuing the I, case. I don't also. want to go. Look, this is the conclusion. If you ask me, I'm telling you, that case did not have to be heard. After all that time, it could have been heard earlier because it was time bound. Okay. Okay. Now, all that being said, there are issues with our Supreme Court. Again, comes to your point, which we can't blame on the judges. If you ask me, I think we need a bigger Supreme Court. Why? We copy too many things and we don't understand the history and the evolution that led to those things. Why would I want a bigger Supreme Court? I think we should have three panels in Accra alone and at least one panel in Kumasi. You know, we have A Supreme one, Court panel? Uh, I'm, I'm struggling to okay. pack everything in. So what I mean is, if we have more Supreme Court justices, mm, you can have three different Supreme Courts sitting. In Ghana, we have only one high court. You know that. That's right. Various divisions. That's right. I don't see why we limit ourselves to even the 15, when we have this load of cases. All right? So why don't we have a situation where in Accra, Okay, we have three Supreme Courts sitting in Kumasi one. Why don't we have specializations in the Supreme Court? All of them are Supreme Court justices. They can be empaneled. The empaneling system should not depend on one person. There should be an algorithm for empaneling. And there should be specialists. There should be specializations. We ought to have a constitutional case panel. We ought to have so the, the present approach 
is going to 20 justices of the Supreme Court. And you are endorsing that. No. Because that will give you three panels. No. What I'm saying is we need to go down to first principles and do some original thinking to redesign our Supreme Court to fit our needs. Comparing to the U.S. Supreme Court is wrong. They cap the number at nine. They take only 70 cases a year. And like you said, there is a Supreme Court in every state. They've designed a system that fits and makes sense for them. If our Supreme Court justices can cap the number of cases, indeed, if we cap the number of Supreme Court justices, then we should cap the cases. But you see, that thing we do here, where every case can go to the Supreme Court, is a plus, it's not a minus. So if we're going to keep that, then why don't we expand the Supreme Court? Why don't we have more Supreme Court panels sitting? Why don't we have specializations? Why don't we have one in Kumasi? So look, I'm saying, one, we need original thinking here. Two, we need to rethink the process for empaneling judges and also appointing judges. First question, what wrong has the Chief Justice done in what he's done? Everybody is complaining about it. But exactly. It's... So let's get to that. That's the core point. So, 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 so I'm coming there. <clears throat> now, is it that she broke any law? And by the way, in this discussion, sometimes we've lost the public because... Have you, have you seen the letter? Um, I haven't seen the original letter. I've seen, you know, all kinds of... <laughs> okay, but so the letter... <clears throat> the letter is the letterhead Honorable Chief Justice, the one you are familiar with. <clears throat> Honorable Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana is dated the 30th of May, 2024. <clears throat> and, forgive me, and uh, she writes, it's headed, it's addressed to the president, and it's headed, proposal for appointment of five judges to the Supreme Court. And after Kennedy and the rest, take issue with this. First is a letterhead of the Chief Justice. It begins by, I write to respectfully request that the following judges be appointed to the Supreme Court of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's I. Yes, yes. And on her letterhead. Then, um, yes, so it's, don't believe it's, the point. it concludes, it concludes, let me use it concludes in her own capacity and position. Let me use the term. Yes. See, so we know what has happened. I think it is not, the optics are wrong for she to be doing what she's done. But I ask myself, what law did she break? Hold on with me. See, the thing is, you have a chief justice. There's a, an appointment process where the judicial council advises on the advice of, look, sometimes we make these rules and evolve conventions, which essentially are an honor system. We expect people to be restrained in how they manage themselves there. We've gotten to a point where we cannot expect an honest system. So my issue is, maybe the Chief Justice shouldn't have done that. It is a bit too personal. I want to. No one person must have such a say in appointment of judges, nor even in the paneling. Hold on with me. So, if she hasn't broken any law, but then we realize that she can do a thing like this, which we all find the states and can argue against. What do you know? What do I know about what? It's, it's not an if. Mm -hmm. What do you know? I, I'm is struggling she, to find what is she broken. Is she permitted by law to do this? Mm -hmm. What's your answer? No law, okay, has to permit her to do something. She is taking some latitude. By what of what does the, the provision of the, of the Constitution something. on the appointment of a, a judge to the Supreme Court say? GB has a role, the Judicial Council, you know, on the advice of the Judicial Council. Now, we have evolved some interpretations to the effect that the Judicial Council should develop the list. It is not written expressly anywhere. So I'm back to this point. We copied from here and here and here. Let us sit down, think through, using first principles and decide what is the best approach for us. I think we must have a greater role for the Ghana Bar Association. Why? We work with them daily. There must be a greater role for the, uh, the Judges Association. Article 1442. Samson. I see, we don't read. have the time. I need to read. We need the context. Article 1442. Mm -hmm. The other Supreme Court justices shall be appointed by the president acting on the advice of the Judicial Council. Council, yes. In consultation with the Council of State mm -hmm. and with the approval of Parliament. Mm -hmm. The question um, people like uh, Dr. Atta Kennedy are asking. Mm -hmm. He says, while the CJ is the chair of the Judicial Council, her letter to the president does not mention the Judicial Council. Mm -hmm. Clearly then, 
this is not a communication on behalf of the Judicial Council. Agreed. What then was her motive? What were the criteria for those uh, selected? So, Samson, here's the thing. What stops the CJ as the head of the judiciary from making a suggestion to the president that, look, we are constrained over here. I run this system and I can see the issues. Here are my suggestions. Please, can you do something? What stops her in this scenario, okay, from doing that? And then the president goes through this process. What she's done, okay, does not stop the constitutional process from going through or being gone through. So my point is, if we don't want her to do that, let us be clear about that. But where you have a clear lacuna, as the head of the institution, somebody will say this is you and I. You and I were in this so country. I don't like you and it. I were in this country I don't like when it, the Judicial Council, performing you? its obligations, mm -hmm. generated a list mm -hmm. for President Mahama to appoint as justices of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And President Mahama picked from the list. Mm -hmm. Then the Ghana Bar Association, led by Nene Amegache, who became you Supreme Court judge, CG. went to the Supreme Court and said, President Mahama does not have that option mm -hmm. to pick from the list and, in fact, decide to jump from maybe one, two, to the third or to the last person under. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court was unequivocal that the process must necessarily be at the initiation of the Judicial Council, mm -hmm. without the Judicial Council's advice mm -hmm. on a list of people to be appointed, mm -hmm. the president cannot be making appointments. So something I'm still saying, I don't like this. But when the CJ writes to the president, it is not an initiation of the process. That can be argued. She's saying, look, we have a problem here. Can you consider these people? The president can totally ignore it. Or now the president or whoever has to, the Judicial Council now, if you ask me, I'd have said the CJ should have worked through the Judicial Council and gotten the process to work. But look, in this country, formally and informally, all kinds of whispers happen. People make suggestions. People make recommendations. Horse trading happens in the back. I'm back to my point. My point is we need to rethink this whole process because it is more or less an honor system. And when you find somebody who um, will not... Uh, uh, do, Dr. Dr. Kennedy, let's hear you. He has a, a quick rebuttal. Yes. Oh, Kofi. Yes. So why are you making life complicated for yourself. Even I can understand 144-2, the Judicial Council. Why couldn't the CJ just call a meeting and say, guys, we have a problem. Let's see how we can solve. If the CJ can follow these simple rules, particularly given the Supreme Court ruling we just referred to, is our judicial system in safe hands? Doc. I actually agree with you that this was not right. But I keep asking the question, is there anything that stops her from doing that? And I'm saying there's nothing that stops her from doing yeah. that. Okay. Then what we should yeah. do is prevent this in future. But this one, was a suggestion. Okay. The Judicial Council can no, Dr. Dr. Kennedy says, Dr. Kennedy says the timing is wrong. I agree. You do? Absolutely. That because we are going, we have six months to elections, mm -hmm. the needs of the Supreme Court should not be met. No. You see, again, that is why... It's not easy to run a country. Look, the Supreme Court clearly has needs. My problem is you don't wait six months to an election okay. to do a thing like this. If I told you, if I told you, if I told you, if I told you that mm -hmm. this process started in February, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Started in February, the Ghana Bar Association's input was sought. They did not disagree. The Attorney General's input was sought he did not disagree and there was a proper brief mm -hmm. of research work mm -hmm. of many pages indicating the circumstances that the judges find themselves vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the load that they are saddled with mm -hmm. and i shared some of the statistics with you at a point they were 12 mm -hmm. at a the point they were 14 mm -hmm. and even in that number there will be circumstances some will have to recuse themselves. Yes. There will be circumstances some will just not be available because of certain situations. Mm -hmm. And there will be the need to reconstitute them. Mm -hmm. And people are not happy with the reconstitution. Yeah. But they don't get to know why the panel is being reconstituted. Yeah. So if you, if you got to know that the panel, the, this process started in February, will you still say it's too late in the day? I will say you need to appreciate the dynamics. 
you don't work in a vacuum. Mm. So you should have done it earlier and quicker. Indeed, I'm not defending the CJ. What I'm saying is that I think she has a certain right as the head of the judiciary to generate this list and make a suggestion. But I, su uh, I suggest that she doesn't do it because of these things. Now, if you were starting all that time, what was the judicial council doing? Why couldn't you work the system to get okay. the process to work out? So hold on, let me see if, if a 